to you and welcome to Newsline. I am Claire Adelabu Abdul Rosa. Tonight we won't be flying because of the bad weather. But I'm excited our basket is full and we do have quite a number of sunshine stories to tell you. Now there are so many interesting write-ups about the woman but the one I find most interesting is the one that speaks about her strength, her capacity and what she can achieve working and supporting one another. Now this really relates to the theme and goal of celebrating women. Tonight on Newsline we will feature different ways women celebrated themselves and of course the he for she friendly men too. And the myth goes on and on and on. Now who is to blame for not conceiving a baby boy? Is it the men or the women? Now, men ignore all scientific proof and say, women, you are the culprit. But what do you say? All right, we hear of when life throws you a lemon, you make lemonade out of it. But what do you do when life throws you a second chance? A news line tonight, we will get some knowledge from someone's experience. We will also take some time to celebrate life over death and young men and women doing extraordinary things, breaking down glass ceilings to project Nigeria positively. All right, time for us to strap ourselves in, get ready for takeoff as we join Elizabeth of Moroye for the news. And Elizabeth here is wishing you happy Women's Day for all your experiences as a woman and happy Mother's Day in anticipation of your experiences as a mother. Thank you so much, Claire, and I do celebrate you as well as a woman. You know, every woman out there is a potential mother, and I actually look forward to the phase of life. Thank you so much, Claire. Now, to the new segment, the federal government has reacted to the claim made by Senator Abdul Ninge, representing Bauta Central, that two versions of the 2024 budget are being operated. In a statement by Bayo Onanoga, special advisor to the president on information and strategy, the federal government says the only 2024 budget that has been implemented is the 28.7 trillion Naira budget passed by the National Assembly and signed by the president. He explains that included in the budget are statutory transfers to the judiciary, National Assembly, TED Fund and others. Bayo Onanduga says the budget that President Tinobu signed into law on January 1, 2024, as passed by the National Assembly, was 28.7 trillion naira, contrary to the view expressed by Senator Ninge, saying there was no way the Senate could have debated and passed a 25 trillion naira budget that was not presented to the National Assembly. On the claim that the 2024 budget was Antinoth, the special advisor to the president, says Gabin found such position as conversed by Senator Ninge as too far-fetched as President Tinubu is leading a government that is far, fair and equitable to every part and segment of Nigeria. The 2024 Appropriation Act, he says, was not squid against any section of the country, while it covers all areas from security to agriculture, healthcare to education, and other important infrastructures such as roads, rails, dams, power and irrigation projects to support all year round agriculture. The statement commends Senators Yemi Adaramodu, Steve Sandy, Karimi, Titus Tatenga, Zam and Kakashi for the forthrightness and coming out against the misrepresentation of facts presented by Senator Nengi. To infrastructure development, the Minister of Works, David Umahi, has assured that the federal government will promote indigenous resources, skills and capabilities capacities through the creation of more opportunities for local contractors in the 
construction industry to thrive. He gave the assurance during the inspection of repair works at a flood section of the East West Road and Benin Warri Road in Delta State being rehabilitated. He former Okafo reports. The East West Road linking vital commercial hubs of Warri and Port Accord is again receiving the federal government's attention. The Minister of Works, David Omahi, is taking steps to relieve the road of its challenges. There is no need of carrying the two carriageway where we don't have money to even finish one. So the idea is continue with the existing work, override, override it, put stone base of 20 cm uh, within the carriageway and then uh, make provision for a new shader of one meter. I believe that the controller will sit up on all her projects so that you pursue whatever the contractor is looking for and then we reach agreement. In every project site visited, the minister introduces more economical engineering solutions which resonate with contractors of like minds. He rounded off his inspection with a check at the rehabilitation of the Wari Supply Road Section 3 and the Benin Wari Road Rehabilitation Section 2. Informa Okafo, NTA News. Meanwhile, the federal government is investing in infrastructure across rural communities in Nasarawa state to address infrastructural deficit, boost rural economy and accelerate development. Ali Utsijani reports that the intervention is with the support of the World Bank. 13.7 billion naira release for infrastructure projects across rural areas of Nasarawa state in recognition of the state outstanding performance in project execution of World Bank support program. The Nigerian COVID-19 Action Recovery and Economic Stimulus NGKs. Benefiting communities selected from each of the 13 local government areas of the state with priority on areas of need. Most of our projects are always utilized, I would say all, uh, are always utilized and being protected by the community because there's that community ownership. One of the things that is going to give us this number one again is for us to be the first state that will be able to compile everything we have done. This road we have finished it, it costs us three million. This road, we, this place we have done it, it costs us 20 million. This borehole we have constructed, it costs us 30 million. This, you know, once we do that, we compile. That's what you call accountability. In addition, the social investment component of the program targets vulnerable persons as beneficiaries of the cash transfer every month in Lafia, Aliuti Jani, NT News. Now, ahead of President Bola Amit Tunubu's state visit to Niger State scheduled for Monday, preparations are on as the remodeling project of the airport, terminal, and coupling of farm machineries have been completed. Hussein Musa reports on level of preparedness for the presidential visit. The visit of President Bola Ahmed Tinibu to Niger State will no doubt spur the state government to sustain its agricultural revolution drive aimed at enhancing food sufficiency and security. While in Mina, President Bola Ahmed Tinibu is expected to inaugurate the remodeled Mina Airport Terminal, which was renamed after him, and it will serve as an alternate route for the Inamdi Azikwe Airport Abuja because of the state's proximity to the federal capital territory. The president is also expected to inaugurate farm machineries that include tractors, harvesters, power tillers, and provision for agro-processing free zone and irrigation facilities demonstrating the Governor Umaru Bago-led administration's commitment to boosting agricultural productivity. In an update on preparations for the president's visit at a press briefing, Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Binta Mamman, said all necessary arrangements has been concluded. The state government is soliciting the support of the populace to embrace the agricultural revolution in order to harness the gains which are beneficial to all and sundry. Emena Musa, NC News. 
Now, President of the Senate, Godswill Akpabio, will on Monday inaugurate and had a committee mandated to investigate the utilization of ways, ways and means which accumulated to 30 trillion naira. Also to be investigated is the implementation of the Anchors Poros program. A statement signed by the Chairman Senate Committee on Media and Public Affairs, Senator Yemi Adaramodo, explains that those invited to make submissions are the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Sibian Governor, Accountant General of the Federation, Debt Management Office, Beneficiaries, MDAs, States, local governments, among others. The inauguration will hold in room 1, room 301 by 12 noon. In other news, former President Mohammed Buhari plots that developmental policies and programs of the Tinobu administration aimed at changing the fortunes of the country. This is when the former Nigerian leader received in audience the Comptroller General of Customs, Bashir Adewali Adeni, who was on a working visit to border communities in Katsina State. Suleiman Kodogi reports. The former President Mohammed Buhari urged Nigerians to endure the current economic hardship and support the policies and programs of the present administration, explaining that there will be light at the end of the tunnel. I thank you very much for coming. I very much appreciate it. And uh, I thought uh, Tinubu has uh, done very well. But Nigeria is so complex, you know, that uh, really there isn't much anybody can do. Earlier, the Controller General of Customs, Bashir Hadewale Adeni lauded the former president for transforming the Nigerian Customs Service while in office, adding that the service will not relent in securing transborder activities aimed at boosting Nigeria's economy. The Customs Buzz, in the company of his management team, and the controller, Katina Area Command, Omar Muhammad, also paid homage to the Emir of Daura, Omar Farouk Omar, for his support and royal blessings. At the Kongolam control post in Mehadwa local government area of the state, the Customs Controller General engaged stakeholders in the border communities where he assured that consultations are ongoing for the reopening of borders. This is one strategy that Mr. President feels can help us to address the problem of food security. So those foods that we have uh, seeds, those ones that are banned for exports. By the time we restock our markets with these food items, it will have some positive effects on the prices. The border communities commended the efforts and determination of the federal government, but appealed for timely reopening of land borders to enhance and facilitate trade, which will translate to more revenue generation for the country. The Controller General of Customs also visited other borders, including Meadwa Out Station. In Katsina, Suleiman Kodogi, NTA News. And operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency have intercepted a consignment of illicit drugs concealed in the engine compartment of a commercial bus. Sinred Dingnun reports that two elderly men were also taken into custody for drug trafficking. Over 5 kg of cannabis sativa and opioids were discovered in the engine compartment of the vehicle along Bongan Ibadan Road, Oshun State, by NDLEA officers on stop and search operation on the highway. The bus driver who took responsibility for the concealment was taken into custody for further investigation. The agency also arrested a lady who produces and distributes coaches during a raid on her hideout in Oshubo. The Ocean State Capital, and at least 16.5 liters of the illicit substance and different quantities of molly and cannabis were recovered from her during the raid. In Borno State, NDLEA operatives arrested two aged men for drug trafficking on Saturday, 9th March, along with two others, while 32,000 amples of tramadol injection were recovered from them. Operatives at Gaidam in Yobe State also intercepted a Gulf 3 salon car heading to Gagamari in Niger Republic, where the occupant was to deliver 40 blocks of cannabis to another dealer, while 42 cartons containing over 8,000 bottles of codeine syrup were also recovered from another driver at Katsina Road, Kaduna, on Tuesday, 5th March. In Kano State, 
A suspect was arrested with 62 kg cannabis at Gada Tamburawa area. Another was also nabbed with 244 bottles of codeine syrup, while the third was found with 48,800 pills of tramadol along Kano Maiduguri Road on Thursday, 7th March. Zen Redding Moon, NTA News. Away from drug interception, the Sultan of Sokoto in Preston General Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Mohammed Saad Abubakar, has announced the sighting of the Ramadan Crescent in Orges, Muslim faithful to commence Ramadan fast tomorrow, Monday 11th of March 2024. Glorious month of Ramadan for extra prayers for our leaders in our country, Nigeria, and for more dedication to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As always, we appeal to the wealthy individuals amongst us to assist the vulnerable and the poor with food and other stuff during this glorious month to cushion the effects of hardship being experienced in the country. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward our ibadat with al Jannah for those, I mean, Ramadan Karim to all Muslims in Nigeria and the world over. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As this year's Ramadan fast approaches, Muslims, especially women, are advised to take advantage of the benefits of the holy month to intensify prayers and redouble efforts towards feeding the needy. This was the message at the annual pre-Ramadan lecture series organized by the Federation of Muslim Women Association of Nigeria, FCT chapter. Salwat Khalil Ibrahim reports. <laughs> It is a spiritual season when Muslims are expected to rededicate their time to worship. The season, however, comes with a lot of food processing for the family or alms giving at dawn. And so, Muslim women from across the federal capital territory are gathered here for the pre Ramadan lecture. You help the orphans, you help the needy, and take care of your relatives. So I am sure. Islamic scholars say there is reward in cooking and sharing of food. They, however, reminded the woman on the spiritual benefit of the period while emulating Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his household. Serving the family is one of the roles assigned to them by Allah, but it's notwithstanding they cannot abandon the role of, uh, of Allah because they are serving the family or they are, they are cooking and whatever they should cook at the same time take care of the their ibadat and do the best they can to, to try to achieve something this much for us to achieve what we are bargaining for what we are bidding for that is the genital paradise we need to bring our women close to us and uh, invest in them and make the, their future bright so that the family will keep uh, moving and will succeed. This is in addition to a general reminder for Muslims to pray for Nigeria and uphold the spirit of neighborliness. Salva Khalil, NTA News. Today is Mothering Sunday and our correspondent Amara Chuku was at the Chapel of Resurrection, NTA, in commemoration of the day. Those songs of praise formed part of activities marking the Mother's Day celebration as a focal point in women's rights movement, recognizing the significance of the day. These women here are using the event as a reminder for all to always uphold the virtues and dignity of women. As they said, in every successful man, there is a woman behind him. In every successful child, there is a mother behind that child. God has been the strong pillars of the home that we are. We are, by the grace of God, holding forth the home and trying our best to see that the home front is, um, comes out well. Be careful to God. Don't bother about the problem that happened in this country. We know that one day it turned for good. 
we are supposed to be support systems to our husbands, to our, our mother-in-laws, to our children, to the entire family at large. These women also use the day to offer prayers for unity and growth of the nation. In Abuja, Umenka, Marjiko, NTA News. The book, The Number One Mission, which captures the battle-faced nature of diplomacy, has been presented to Nigerians to further highlight vital roles of diplomacy in shaping national history. Deba Balagobo reports. The 97-page book is designed to document records of experience, progress achieved, and a roadmap for the future. The author, Yemi Edun, says the pages of the book are expected to equip readers with deeper understanding of modalities of diplomacy. And people need to take a judgment about the type of people we are. You know, we need to push out some positive narratives. And these are what our forebearers have done. These are what they are, we are doing now. So that when people look behind, they will know that people exist and there were benchmarks for our own time as well. Chairman Nidkam Abike Dabiri Arewa, alongside other stakeholders, described the book as a testament to the rich tapestry of experience and emotions. We could sit in London feeling pretty, but it's gone beyond that to give back, to make a contribution. And that is why the Diaspora Commission supports people like Mr. Yemi Edu. I urge stakeholders, sponsors, to do everything to keep this book alive, to give it the deserved attention. Every literary contribution has to be supported and appreciated. And for those of us who, are, who like history, who believe in documentation, we need more people to tell the Nigerian story. Good bit of history. I encourage everyone to read it. Um, it, I wish more Nigerians would write books like this. We need this material out there. The unique twist, according to the author, is that the proceeds will be given to charity. In Abuja, Deborah Balagubo, NT News. Next, some sporting stories. Thank you, buddy, for the updates. The weather has been awesome lately in different shades, so let's find out its colors for tomorrow, Monday. Glad to have you join us. Monday morning is expected to be dry and sunny with a bit of haziness across the northern parts of the country. The central cities and the southern region are expected to have parties of cloud with sunshine intervals during the morning hours. We equally have prospect of early morning thunderstorms to parts of Benue, Imo, Enugu, Anambra, Ebonyi, Abia, Cross River, Rivers, and Delta. Better chances of isolated thunderstorms are there during the afternoon period to affect parts of Kogi, Benue, most parts of the inland cities of the south, as well as the coastal cities. Let's take a look at the heat index as well as the air quality index. I'm Sefia Sanginusa. Thank you for watching. Hence the news segment, Claire has reports you wouldn't want to miss after the break to stay with us.